Tyron Smith is officially back for the Dallas Cowboys. Just how good did he look in week two? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast locked Network, your on. team every locked, day. Locked, 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 locked on. Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Lockdown Cowboys podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Lockdown. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, I want to talk about the offensive line, specifically Tyron Smith and TJ Bass. Uh, but what were some, just some overall takeaways that you had after watching the All-22 film from the Cowboys offense? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the key thing to take away there is that you you see a lot of the kind of rhythm and quick passing that that is you know the the calling card of the West Coast offense, and I think having included that into the offense has really made Dak look very confident. That the the play calling seems not as flashy as last season, but everything has more purpose. Uh, specifically, like stuff like that third and short against uh, uh, that they had, like it, they they just you know were going up as early in the game. Uh, instead of trying to run the ball right at Quinn and Williams, their all pro uh, defensive tackle, they swing a pass out to to uh, uh, CD Lamb and a, you know, like a little screen on trip side to the field where he was able to pick up a quick first down. And then later they use that knowledge against the the, the Jets by having a very similar situation where CD's out in, in in the middle of the slot and they swing Deuce Vaughn out after doing an orbit motion back into the flat. And made it look like a quick screen again to Vaughn. Yeah. Very similar situation where they had trips on the field side, and the corner comes down to react to that, and then Vaughn, uh, and then suddenly CD, you know, flashes right into the open hole, and it's a quick, easy first down. It's stuff like that where you're starting to see things kind of fit together in a way that we, I don't know that we've seen previously uh, with with Kellen Moore at offense. And one of the reasons why the offense is having so much success right now is because of somebody like Tyron Smith having a what do you want to say? A Pro Bowl level left tackle yeah. back on the field. I he was absolutely incredible. It, this looks like the 2016, 2017, yeah. 2018 version of Tyron Smith. It it just looks cleaner. He looks more comfortable. He's not fighting against his body. I mean, he's just everything looks smooth and comfortable. And that's you know that's kind of the thing with with Tyron is that he's such an incredible athlete, right? Like that. It, really, the last few years of of injuries have kind of sapped him of that sort of kind of fluid athleticism that we're used to seeing with someone like Tyron, he looks healthy. He looks comfortable. He's moving in a way that again, it's, it doesn't look like he's fighting his body. He looks comfortable with what he's doing. Uh, it, yeah, it's like turning back the clock with Tyron Smith. It's, it's been incredible so far. Yeah, we, so we got some major knocking on wood going on right oh, now. Yeah, given sure. Tyron yeah. Smith's uh, injury history. However, I will say this is probably one of the longest stretches that we've gone now without him having a major injury, right? Cause he played, was it three games at the end of last year in the regular season at right tackle, two games in the playoffs at right tackle. He was healthy all off season to get a little bit banged up in training camp a couple of times, but nothing serious. And now we're two games through the regular season. It's just, you can see what his, how much better he looks now that he's not coming off of a major surgery or a neck, you know, injury or a leg injury. Like it's just, it's it's nice to see him relatively healthy for the first time in I don't even know how long. Well, and it's not even just about being healthy enough to play in the games. It's about being healthy enough to practice, like getting in and being able to get yeah. all those reps to get ready for, for the season. He just looks more in sync with what he was doing than he has well, previously. And, and there's there's I don't even know how to explain it correctly, but there is this thing like the more that you play football the more durable you end up yeah. getting, right? Because you're, you're used to the pounding uh, on the offensive line. You get used to the physicality. It can be really hard to come in and play one game and then be ready for the next game. But the, the more that you play, 
you know, just the more durable you you can be. And that's, it seems like what's kind of happening to Tyron Smith. Now that he's gotten to the swing of things, he's actually practicing like on yeah. Wednesdays and Thursdays yeah. now, which I mean, there, there was a few years there where you would never ever. see him on a Wednesday. He was <laughs> yeah. limited on Thursday and you might get him for a full walkthrough on Friday. That was his practice schedule for several years. Yeah. And I, and I think it's made all the difference. I mean, honestly, like I said, it's, it's, it's more, it's, it's, it's one thing to be healthy enough to physically be able to play in the game. It's another thing to be healthy enough to go through the normal week of practice to get your body, you know, in tip top shape to play in the game. And I think that that difference has been in the different has been the difference in his play from the the times we've seen him. You know, oh, he just got healthy. We're throwing him in because that's all we've got. Versus, no, he had a full tr- uh, off season. He had a full training camp. Yep. They limited him. They they were careful with his snaps, but he was there. He was getting all the snaps he felt necessary, and he was ready for the season when it started. And this is the type of play that we we expect from Tyron Smith when he gets all those opportunities. I want to talk about the the players next to him at left guard because we started the game with Chuma Udoga, who I actually think struggled a little bit more in this game than he did against the Giants a week ago. Uh, I love your thoughts there. But then we got, was it late second quarter? TJ Bass came in, played yep. almost the entire uh, second half at left guard, mm-hmm. did switch over to right guard in the last couple of drives of the game before we saw Austin Richards. Um, I thought Bass had... Two clear losses, one of which was on the first snap that he had. But outside and the snap of that, right after that, too, was yeah, pretty right, bad as well. Yeah, right after that, really settled in and gave you replacement level guard play. I, I mean, I think it was maybe even better than that. I think it was, you know, like a, a plus level guard play, an average plus level guard play. Uh, but yeah, his first two snaps were not great. Uh, his first snap was him uh, running a, a, a power play across the formation. He was the puller and he got absolutely bossed by the yeah. defensive end. It was like a very much like, oh, you're the big strong guy from Oregon. That's nice. I'm a professional defensive end and, and just basically stoned him right in this track. Uh, and then he, and then as he got blocked in his, uh, as he got bossed in the middle of that, he got run up on by Tyron Smith, who was actually also coming that direction. So yeah. it was ugly for that. And then the, I think the very next play, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was the one where Quentin Williams beat him very quickly inside and got a, a big tackle for loss. But after that, I really felt like he settled in. Uh, he, I mean, you know, he looked comfortable. He looked uh, uh, powerful uh, and, and was you know a part of, of the of a run game that was getting good push i had a couple different clips i saw where he was you know getting to second level guys and and, and sealing them off pushing guys uh, back a little bit uh uh, very impressed with with what tj bass was able to do again you know look and awesome rich awesome richards again against what was a very good defensive interior i mean al woods and 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 quinn williams are no joke no and 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 they are a handful and there were definitely times when it felt like they were a little bit over their heads but they survived it. And, and I think that's the key thing is, especially in offensive line play, the thing you have to learn is you learn your technique, learn your technique, learn your technique, learn your technique. And then when you get to the game, you have to understand that it's going to take more than your technique to win in the NFL. So they, you have, sometimes it's, you're going to have to win ugly. You have to learn yeah. how to win clean and win ugly. And I think we saw a little bit of both with TJ. Bell. One of the reasons why we spend so much time talking about these backup offensive linemen is because they can be the difference in winning and losing games, especially when you get later in the year yeah. when injuries start to mount up. And it's just what happens in the NFL. Like you've got to be able to sustain injuries. And I think in some ways, this Tyler Smith injury has been good for the Cowboys because yeah. it's, it's allowed you to see Chuma Yudoga. It's allowed you to see TJ Bass. And I think now as we get into, you know, further along in the season, obviously you're not going to feel great if Bass or Yudoga have to play, but I don't think it's a, it's going to be a, I don't think it's going to be a disaster on your offensive line. I think those guys have shown you enough to help you get through games and potentially get through a month or six weeks of the schedule. And this guy's is why Marcus and I have been pushing back very hard whenever anyone asks about why aren't they signing an offensive lineman? Why aren't they signing an offensive lineman in training camp? Because if you could get a guy like TJ Bass ready, and then I mean, also Austin Richards came in and played f- five or six incredible snaps as well. Yeah. They were yeah. the Cowboys were down to their fourth guard at one point, fourth string left guard, fourth, yep. fourth, the third and fourth string left guard, both playing at the same time, and we're still dominating the line of scrimmage. Don't you feel like that's a better uh, offensive line situation than all those teams that are feeling like they have to go out and sign Dalton Reisner yes. or whoever else was out on the street? If you if you get to December and you've got a young guy that you've already seen play like 
you know, a couple dozen snaps throughout the season or maybe even a whole game because of an injury, don't you feel like infinitely better about a young player who's on the rise, who is getting in late in December, as opposed to some broken down veteran who you know what he used to be, but you don't know what he's going to be when you get him. I I just think that the Cowboys have played this offensive line situation masterfully. uh, And and it showed off by the fact that they were able to go too deep at guard and, and not really lose a step. It was really impressive uh, once everything kind of settled out to see those young guys get in there and really make a difference. So we talked about some of the role players on the offensive line. Let's talk about some of the other role players on the offensive side of the ball, specifically at wide receiver in running back next. This episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use, and it gives you a peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is so simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using promo code LOCKEDON at checkout at jacemedical.com. That is J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code LOCKEDON. This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into the action this season with the NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders. There's futures bets. I believe the Cowboys right now on FanDuel are plus 350 to win the NFC. I think they're plus 650 to win the Super Bowl. And I, I the last time I checked on FanDuel, they were plus 105 to win the NFC East. Real close there with the Eagles. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Lane, let's talk about some of the other players on offense outside of CeeDee Lamb, uh, Tony Pollard, Dak Prescott, you know, the guys that we talk about all the time, I want to talk about some of the other players that caught your eye in this game. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a lot of interesting role players that had uh, some, had some e- either interesting snaps or, or interesting usage. And I think you start with like guys like Turpin, right? I, I think we saw another interesting game of, of usage for him and, and, and what they have planned for him. Uh, he had a catch out of the backfield. Uh, you know, he again, you see him lining up in the backfield, running kind of a little flat route in which they just basically Dak quickly got through his progressions, let some of these uh zone defenders drop a little bit, and then quickly spun around and got the ball out to uh Turpin in the flat. He was able to cut it up a field for a first down. There was another play where they had kind of a, a, a follow concept which is like two slants uh going the same direction like one after the other so they were going from uh let's say from the quarterback's right to left uh he had a, a slot guy and an, a, an x both running slants a, a behind each other which drew all the attention going right to left and then on the left side you had turpin running a very shallow cross underneath all of it so while the linebackers were paying attention to where CD lamb was crossing uh, and, and making sure that they were bracketing him. They lost track of Turpin uh, going underneath them. The crosser going the opposite way. Dak was able to kind of float a ball out to him. He got it in the flat, was able to turn it up, <laughs> get, got hit, spun around and landed on, on his feet like a cat and got a couple extra more yards. Uh, and so I, I just think it was really interesting usage there. And, and then I just kind of his uh, 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 <laughs> philosophical opposite. Uh, Hunter Lipke. I mean, we're yeah. seeing him like just being fun- functioning as a full fullback. Uh, definitely using him as a lead blocker on that. Um, you know, especially in the in the red zone on that on that touchdown that they threw to Schoonmaker. He was actually open on the other flat on the other side. Uh, just kind of ran a little flat route outside, but Dak had a better shot at the Schoonmaker throw. 
So uh, Schoonmaker, I, Schoonmaker, right? Did I say Schooner? Did I say it again? Yeah, that's, I, that's I, honestly, We'll honestly, get it by the like, end of his career. We'll be fine. Well, yeah, at some point. Um, and so, yeah, it was great. It's great to see some, like, not only, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the you know, obviously CD Lamb had 140 yards receiving and looked incredible. There's lots to talk about there, but it is also great to see, like, some of these down roster guys. And, and, and I, I think Tolbert also had a really nice game, made a couple of conversions on some, on some great catches, had some great blocks. Um, and, and, you know, look, uh, if, if we're throwing in roll guys, Jalen Brooks maybe made the block of the whole Heck night yeah, on, on that on that Deuce Vaughn run out to the outside. He sealed off that whole left side, got the defensive end caught inside, drew Sauce Gardner in, uh, and left Vaughn like wide open run lane on, down the sideline for like a twenty yard run. So uh, I think we saw a little bit of of you know uh, saw some of these guys Vaughn and and, and Pollard, uh, did, oh not Pollard uh, but Turpin and 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 Tolbert and and Lipke and all these guys kind of get the opportunity to get in there and contribute uh, schoonmaker get a chance to get in there and and contribute uh in small ways and sometimes in big ways you know and 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 I think having those guys in there to complement the Pollards and and the light lambs uh, that's kind of what's taken this offense to a new level right is Dak being able to get the ball out of his hands quickly distribute it to guys who can create with the ball in their hands uh, and, and not have to worry about holding onto the ball in a collapsing pocket with a very good pass rush uh, against a very good pass defense. And I think that was a very winning combination for the Cowboys this week, last week, and, and hopefully in the future. I just keep going back to the playoff game last year against the 49ers when Tony Pollard got hurt and there was only CD Lamb. And that was really the only player that Dak had any kind of connection with. And it just felt like nobody else could get anything going. It seems like Mike McCarthy is making it a point to try to get as many other players involved in this offense as possible. So something like that doesn't happen again where, yeah, yeah even if you lose Pollard, hey, we still have these other four or five role players that can do, you know, we can get them each three touches and we can find a way to move the ball on offense. And I think you saw that against the Jets. Yes, CD had a big game, but it was everybody else making a little play here and a little play there that it helped them get a touchdown drive early in the game. It helped them, you know, continue to, to milk some of the clock off in the second half. It was really encouraging to see, and I'm going to be curious to see as the year goes on, do they try to expand that? Like, do they try to get even more players involved or do they yeah. start to tighten they it up a little bit and yeah. say, Hey, these are our five offensive playmakers. These are the ones that we want touching the ball as much as possible. Let's kind of ride those guys going forward. Yeah, and I just want to throw in one more name too, another familiar name that that you know, kind of as the season will go on, I bet we'll start getting more and more looks, and, and that's Gallup. You know, he he didn't get a ton of action in this game, but there were two or three different times when he was open, and and like Dak just didn't couldn't get the throw, including one that was a very clear touchdown. And he had, I mean, he's playing well. Like when he got his opportunity, that one catch he had was out outrageous he made that yeah. that one catch where he made the the catch behind him was able to maintain his balance and then leap himself over the over the first down marker uh, all while you know staying off the ground he uh, had so, sauce on him a lot in that game and i just don't yeah. think the cowboys wanted to challenge Why? sauce one-on-one if they didn't have to yeah and and it made sense like it, it again i just wanted to point that out because going back and watching the tape i, I didn't it wasn't that he wasn't getting open at times. And I, I agree. He was dealing with sauce a lot, uh, but he was getting open, but I think it was, you know, the, the, the ball was getting out to other folks and the, the, the Dak just wasn't looking his way as much. I will say the only other thing that I would be a little bit critical of the offense in this game is I don't think you can give Tony Pollard 32 touches a game. That was way too many touches in a blowout and not really a blowout. That's, that's not fair. And a game that you are controlling most of the time, I would have loved to see more of Rico Dowdle. I thought Dowdle looked really good, especially whenever see. you get him out in space. Yeah. I, I'm sure the Cowboys are going to be cognizant of that going forward. And there's just no way that Pollard's ever going to have a game this year where he has more touches than that. Yeah. I just want to see more Rico Dowdle because it seems like the more chances that you give him to make plays, the more that he flashes. Yeah. And the last thing before the last thing I'll just want to nitpick about before we go to the defense is. Uh, you know, I think there is some stuff to clean up in the red zone, but I don't think it's structural problems. It felt like Just it was a lot of stuff. one. Yeah, it felt like a, each drive had at least one negative play that set them back to uh, to a point that they couldn't overcome. And, and the Jets defense was very stout in the red zone. There's, there's, just give them some credit, too. Yeah, I, and I one of the things that I've noticed so far is it doesn't seem like the Cowboys are interested in doing any kind of quarterback sneaks with Dak Prescott at all because they had several 
third and short, fourth and short opportunities, including a goal, you know, a couple of different times where they were at the one yard line where they just didn't even bother trying to do a quarterback sneak. And it felt like, Hey, if you wanted to do that, you could, there's, you're not going to lose yards. Yeah. It's a pretty low risk play, but it doesn't seem like Mike McCarthy has any interest in putting Dak Prescott in harm's way, at least early in the year. Yeah. Not in that sense that they'd much rather get him out in the, in the in space where if he needs to, he can run out of bounds or if he can slide, he can slide. Uh, the problem with this QB sneak is that you really do expose your quarterback to cheap shots. Which is why I wonder, like, are we going to eventually see Trey Lance at some point doing some quarterback sneak stuff and some short yardage stuff for them? Or are they just not interested in doing that? I mean, I think they have to figure out a roster situation to make that work. Either he's going to have to get to a point where he can actually be the game day backup quarterback, or they're going to have to figure out a way to roster him just as a third quarterback. Because there was opportunities in this game. They had first and goal from the one yard line and they had to kick a field goal. Right. If you run back-to-back quarterback sneaks with Trey Lance, there's just no way that he's not getting in, right? I also think that you get Tyler Smith back in this game, mm-hmm. and and you're you're not playing, you know, Dexter Lawrence and or Quinn Williams in the middle of the defense. But then... you are going to be playing. That's I know, true. I, I hate to look forward to the playoffs because the regular season still does matter. But if you get to the playoffs, you're going to be playing Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis That's and. True. J. Ron Hargrave with the 49ers, like you're gonna have to be able to to execute on short yardage and and maybe again, maybe that's where the Cowboys will let Dak do a lot more actual running and quarterback sneaks. But I, I it does feel like in the preseason, or excuse me, well, kind of it does feel like <laughs> an earlier part of the year that yeah. the Cowboys just don't want to risk him at all in those kind of plays. Yeah, I mean maybe maybe the angles change in the playoffs. Yeah. Maybe you're right. All right, let's talk about some role players on defense and some players not named Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs. <laughs> Next. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It's easily the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. All you have to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can win up to 25 times your money this football season. My favorite part is that there's so many different stat projections and so many different players to choose from. You could even pick a kicker, whether they're going to make more than or less than a certain number of field goals or extra points in a game. You can look at tackles for a linebacker. It's so much fun. There's so many different options. Go to prizepicks.com slash NFL and use promo code LockdownNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash LockedOn and use promo code LockdownNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. We want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. Every day, we'll be back on tomorrow's show to answer your uh, Twitter questions, so make sure that you send them into us at Marcus underscore Mosier at McCool BCB. Landon, let's talk about some of the role players on defense. I want to start with Chauncey Golston. I thought he was fantastic yeah. in this game. What did you see? Yeah, I mean, again, I think he's kind of continuing on the role that he had sort of carved out for himself last season. I mean, he's basically just a specialist pass rushing defensive tackle and he's been very very good at it like he's when he gets in and and it's a pass situ- situation he's able to leverage uh, his 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 use his huge long arms and and, and explosiveness inside uh, just able to get around get his hands and arms around guards and, and get get past them quickly uh, they've also expanded his role a little bit when they do some of the kind of five man surface stuff where that includes like three defensive tackles lined up inside like usually he will be the defensive tackle on kind of the weak side of like the backside sort of of the formation um so you'll see like uh uh uh, whether it's mozzie or or hankins in the middle and then uh uh, usually osa that's on the front side or gallimore and then he'll be the kind of backside uh, defensive tackle there uh which you know again i I think it it puts him in a situation where he's in a one-on-one against an interior offensive lineman which is what you're looking for and that's where he's going to thrive he still is not a guy that you're like trying to like throw out a double team or split that double team or 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 even be in an early down you know neutral game script situation i i just 
He's not he's not fantastic against the run, even when you kind of slide him outside. I think early on in his career, they they tried to make him this kind of inside outside player, hopefully like a power can, end. Right? Yeah, like a power end. That's just not really his game. What his game is being inside, beating guards with with quickness and length. Uh, and and again, he's so good, and it's such a valuable trait that I, I, I mean, I'll take Doesn't a. Matter. 15 to 18 snap defensive tackle who's only pass rushing if 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 it's at a plus you know level uh which it is i mean he's he's his win rate considering the the minimum uh snap counts is is one of the best in the league so uh i think he's come in here and he's kind of improved on the role that he had shown us a little bit at the end of the season uh he's just improved his hand usage improved his quickness uh, and it's found another like kind of slight role that he can fit himself into, which has made him more useful as a rosterable player. But you know, when when the Cowboys get into that sort of uh, uh, when the Cowboys put you in that sort of neutral or negative game script where you're he's, having he's to, a to throw the ball, then they get to put him in. He's just a nightmare. Like it's yeah. just another thing that the Cowboys can do when you get into a negative game script to kind of be a force multiplier for guys like, you know, Osa and, and Micah and uh, Lawrence and everyone else on that D line. I've got two critiques from the defense. And I know that's man, you're really picking nits on defense right now, but I did want your thoughts in this. Yeah. I still don't understand this Leighton Van Der Esch playing as like an outside linebacker edge rusher on some plays. It just doesn't make sense to me. He's not a blitzer. They did it several times in this game and there's really I, I don't see the benefit of it. I, I, explain to me what's going on here. So I think what's what, what this is is this is a purely uh, uh, pre-snap, you know, confusion sort of situation. I mean, obviously there there are situations where Layton is rushing the passer, and that's I think to kind of make the threat of Layton rushing the passer real. But I think that there are a lot of times where look, they're trying to get to present five man services. And that's kind of part of one of the, the overall notes I had with this, with, with the defense is that they're, they're, they're spending a lot of time presenting five man surfaces, meaning that they, they have five defensive linemen that are lined up on your, or not necessarily defensive linemen, five defensive Play. players yeah. lined up opposite of the five offensive linemen that they have. And the idea is that, that to make you think that at the very least, you're going to have one-on-one blocks with all, all of your offensive linemen. You're not going to be able to achieve any double teams uh, in, 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 you know, in pass blocking. Uh, and, and I think, by adding linebackers into that mix. And it's not just Leighton Van Der Esch, if you notice. It's it's Bell. They're doing the similar kind of stuff with Parsons, but we just don't count it because, you know, well, Parsons he's just, is, well, he's is, a much is a more pa- effective is, is a player rusher, in that right? role. Yeah. yeah, but but ultimately what they're doing is it's the kind of uh, uh, Minnesota Vikings, like peppering the A-gap, you know, amoeba kind of front stuff where you're presenting a lot of different looks. You don't know who's coming, who's dropping. Adding a linebacker in there adds a uh, uh, an amount of of realism that that, that the guy could either could either uh, blitz or drop back uh, and be a, a good yeah. coverage guy. I I think it works in the sense that it creates confusion. Um, but I agree that I, I don't know that it's not something I want to see happening on a regular basis. Yeah, and it seems like it is. Well, I you know. I think it works against Zach Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just worried about like when you play Jalen Hurts, is it going to work? Right. Sure. No. Well, I mean, you know, for different reasons that might work, but yeah, yeah I, I do. Yeah. I do think that, you know, look, having a linebacker as a chase player, especially if they can get free, makes sense even versus a defensive lineman, because they're just better in pursuit. They're they better are. at getting to the, they're better the, at the angles ball and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah the, the only other thing just really, really quickly before we head out, uh, Sam Williams still is can be a really disruptive pass yeah. rusher, but his his run fits and sometimes the yeah. angles that he takes and gets seen too far up. He's he's still a long ways away from being a complete player. That's all discipline, right? It's yeah. the dis- he's 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 having a hard time maintaining the edge, you know, keeping in his gap in in, in his fit in the run game. Yeah, he's he's destroying he's he destro- destroying uh, pass blocking, you know. Uh, but I mean, even that is not at the rate that we've seen previously. No, he needs um, to get better quick, a lot quicker. Yeah. And so I, I feel like, especially in the run game, he's got to, he's got to improve a little yeah. bit because that's where, you know, we've seen him give up some big plays because he, his rush levels were off or, and, yeah. and allowed, you know, uh, Wilson a chance to squirt through, or, you know, he just was blocked out of his, out of his gap and, 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 and a run went right past him. So yeah, Williams has got to be a little bit better. Yeah. I, and I think he will, the more that he plays, I'm sure he'll get there. But right now all the defensive ends, it's pretty clear that he's probably the furthest away 
Uh, especially when you compare them to Parsons and Lawrence and Armstrong and Fowler. Armstrong. Like, they're just, Aren't all the everyone, all the defensive ends are playing so well that it really isn't right a now. slight against Williams that no. he's not, not the best. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Again, tomorrow we answer your Twitter questions. Go check out our YouTube uh, channel. We post shows every single day over there. We are free and available on all platforms. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. See you guys next time.